Welcome to another episode of Lost in the Shuffle. I am here with my good buddy, John Lelogia. What's up, John? What's going on? Not too much, man. A lot of stuff happening today, actually. Was there news? I, I had no I had no idea. My I, dog is, as you can see in the background, he's super, he's super into the news uh with the with the Packers. He's a, we're a big Packer fan uh family over here. So pretty pumped about the Aaron Rodgers news. I can see that you got the hat. You also have you got the jer- jersey on a jersey. What is it? It's just a regular shirt. I do oh. have my Rodgers jersey. I just didn't put it on. But it'd be uh, overkill, right? It would be a bit much. And I was like the hat. Try to play cool, even though I'm so happy <laughs> that he's coming back. I know you're not. Uh, and I'm, again, very sorry for all the Bear fans out there. Hey, you know, 2026 might be your year. Hug a Bear not, fan. But- Hug a Bear fan today, honestly. Like you thought, I put out a tweet today that was like, you know, Bears well, so ownership. What was it still- like as a Bear fan where you like, please, God, like this could be it. We got fields. Yeah. This could be over soon like please leave where's Pers- every bear what was going on what was going in through your mind as a bear fan when this was going down precisely i mean you know that this is a very easy division to win if rogers isn't yeah. there that's why he should stay there it's the path of least resistance you play jared goff you play Kirk cousins and you know now justin fields is in his second year so um we were very optimistic you know we got a very good quarterback defense is you know kind of doing their thing. Um, And yeah, we're in a shitty division. So we were very much looking forward to having a chance at winning the NFC North. And that door got closed today really quickly. I know. I know. Yeah. I, I feel for you, but you know, as a fan who I was the biggest Rogers fan imaginable, he's the best quarterback I've ever seen. Like, just unbelievable. I mean, to have a guy like that on your team, I mean, I grew up obviously in Chicago and watching Jordan and the Bulls. I'm not comparing Aaron Rodgers to Michael Jordan, but to be a fan of a team with, with a guy who just can change a game and is so unbelievably Reg- gifted. Regular season game. I think is incredible. He's right. all, he's won a Super Bowl. <laughs> he's a Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. Okay. So all right. So, won one. Some haven't won any. Like that is true. Very he's true. A, he's, unbelievable and to and to be able to you know watch him over the years and just the sheer talent that he has is is incredible the throws he make he makes plays that no other quarterback makes maybe Mahomes but he has to do it for longer I'm overjoyed that he's coming back to the team obviously another Super Bowl contend contending team and again it's been rough for me because this last year he really put me through the ringer with liking him because he did so many things that I don't, I don't necessarily agree with. I well, thought he's a he drama was, queen. I mean, he's we a can drama agree queen, on that, and he right? is too. Like, make no mistake about it. Like, he is high maintenance, like one hundred percent. And normally, I hate that. And I, there's no excuses. And if you're not a team player, get off the field. Like, you know, Brady constantly restructuring his contract to make room for other players. Rogers never does that, and he wants top dollar. That being said. There's no, there's pretty much nobody you make excuses for. He is a unique talent that you, you do need to acquiesce and adhere to his standards. I know it sucks. I know you don't want to, but the guy won back-to-back MVPs. They don't go to the play. People give him shit about not performing in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. The only reason they're there is because of him and their losses, they never lose because of him. It's not like he's atrocious in these games. He outplayed Brady in the NFC championship game last year. He had three touchdowns and one pick. Brady had Mm -hmm. three picks in the second half. Rodgers completely outplayed him. And this year, their special teams imploded, which we knew eventually was going to catch up with them. So you you could argue though, he did put up one touchdown in a game. He did not. Yes. He didn't play. To like, his standards. To his standards, but he is not the reason the Packers lost that game. He is not the reason they've lost any of their playoff games. Look at his numbers. His record isn't good, but his stats and his performance are not bad. They traditionally have god awful defenses. And the one year for years that they had a good defense this year, 
special teams let him down. Mm-hmm. So is obviously when we talk about contracts and money and stuff in my mind, I'm always like, it's not my money. I don't give a shit. Well, how much you give him or how much you spend, but it does take an, a, a toll or an effect on your team. So giving him, he's now going to be what the highest played NFL player in history. Correct. Two two hundred million dollars, a four year deal, $153 million mm-hmm. guaranteed. So here's the Packers salary cap situation. They're expected to be 29 million over the cap. Again, Rogers is the salary contract, cap even real at this point? They just said they were going mean, to up it to 208 million. I think this year they just came out today, um, and they franch because of this they franchised Adams. So Devonte Adams. So Devonte Adams is coming back to the Packers. The franchise tag would be 18.4 million, but then Zadarius Smith, the 2022 cap hit, you know, for him is 27.7 million. So. They got Rodgers. They they moved so many different contracts around. They restructured David Bakhtiari's contract. Um, so basically, you're going to lose a couple defensive guys. But, you know, with Robert Tunyon coming back, the offense is going to be great. The defense is still solid. You know, you know Jair Alexander, they might lose Devontae Campbell, but that defense is really solid. No offense. The NFC North is absolute dog shit. They're going to roll every team in that division. I'm not, the, only, the only team I'm – a little bit concerned about is Minnesota, but cousins really, you know, never beats him. Also Matt Stafford never beats Rogers either. Um, So I'm not really super worried about the Rams either. So I think they're the team to beat in the NFC. They definitely have a little bit of work that they have to do. I also think as well, LaFleur finally is on the hot seat. There are no more excuses with Matt LaFleur. He has his, Pro Bowl, Super Bowl, Hall of Fame quarterback. He's got two exceptional running backs. I think a Pro Bowl tight end and Robert Tunyon when he comes mm. back after his torn ACL. A really good offensive line back there is coming back. Some really good playmakers on defense. If they don't get, if they don't get to the Super Bowl, obviously people will give shit for Rodgers, but the guy's already won one. Like, look, this is so LaFleur's time to really be on the hot seat to be like, all right, you've three years in a row with 13 wins, like, you got to win in the playoffs. And, and I, and I, I get knock them too, because everybody knew special teams was terrible last year. I was screaming it from the rooftop for weeks. Like mm. it is so bad. And they were dead last. You don't even have to be good. Just be middle of the road. Don't screw anything up. And they couldn't do it. And he was questioned about that week after week. And he never made adjustments. Uh, but they got Rich Pisaccia, the the interim head coach from the Raiders, taking over special teams. So obviously I'm very happy. Rodgers is very high maintenance, but, you know, I don't give a shit. I'm a fan. I don't have to work with him. I want to watch him on Sundays. He gives my team the best chance to win. He's the best quarterback I've ever seen. I don't care if Brady wins a thousand Super Bowls. He's so much better than Brady. I don't, I don't care. Brady could win a million Super Bowls. Rodgers is the best quarterback I've ever seen and, you know, disregard that I'm wearing a Packer hat. John, if they don't win a Super Bowl in the next four years, is this a, is this a loss? Spending $200 million for four years and you can't get a Super Bowl out of it because we obviously know he can perform during the regular season. And like you said, he, it's not his fault that they're losing in the postseason. But he fails to get over that hump. I know you said he already got a, yeah, he a already, Super Bowl. He's already won that was one. a People decade ago. That. I understand, but that was a decade ago. And yeah, Marino like you said, didn't win one. There's so many other of quarterbacks. Course, Eli won, won two. Won. There's a lot. There's tons, of yeah, course. That Eli's a great point. Eli sucks. He is garbage. And he's, he's going to get in the Hall of Fame because he, he won two Super Bowls. So that should Brady. also tell you that. That's also overrated. Manning, Eli Manning is not nearly as good a quarterback as Aaron Rodgers, and he's won two. So what does that tell you? It tells me that the Giants had phenomenal defenses, like specifically defensive fronts, OCU Manura, Justin Tuck. Strahan, I mean, legit. The first one like, against the, the, the Patriots, they snuck rushers. in. They legit snuck into rushers. the Super Bowl, to the playoffs. They snuck in that first year against the Patriots. They did not have a very good team. They're still pretty good. That defense is legit. So all I'm saying is this is going to be the most expensive contract in NFL history. Yes. He hasn't won a Super Bowl in over a decade. Yes. So if it doesn't get done now, is that a fail? I, I think the amount of money that you're paying him. Um, and the bullshit you put it, up it with. It will be seen. Yes, it will be seen as as a failure. I agree. I, I think he needs... Not for me, 
You know, I don't think for me, because I know he's one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen. I think for his legacy, I think he needs one more. I really, he needs one. I would agree. Yeah. And he might not even play the four years. This is just extending that window to get one more Super Bowl. They got a really good coach. They have so many talented players. They have two phenomenal running backs. Their offense is going to be tops in the league. They have a pro bowler in every position. The chemistry between him and Devante is just incredible. It's when those two are on the same page, you can't even guard him even with, you know, with double team, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with like a, a corner or a safety, he's, he can still beat you because he's so his first step is so quick. So I guess I'm maybe he just guy. needed, maybe Rogers just needs a hot boy summer. You know what I mean? He got rid of his fiance, you know, because he doesn't want a ring, obviously hasn't, hasn't gotten a ring in over a decade. So he's not looking for a ring, got rid of his fiance. Maybe this is like a hot boy summer, gets a new haircut. So he, he doesn't look did like have a hot homeless... boy summer. He let his hair grow. He was in Hawaii, hanging out with Miles Teller and Shaylee and Woodley. He already had his hot yeah, boy summer. But Hollywood, those are Holly weirdos, dude, the Holly weird. You know how it is. The LA people. I get it. They yeah. they can skew your thought, your focus, things like that, right? He's already he's already a weird dude. It's really he hard. Is. I also think he he purposely messes with the media. You know, he'll he'll do stuff to plant things or just to throw people off. Like he just loves doing it. So yeah, showing the his things feet. he says and does, like take with a grain of salt because he could just be trying to mess with people. Yeah. All right, John. Moving on to something else. Kelvin Ridley. Kelvin Ridley caught gambling $1,500 on five and eight leg parlays. Parlay. I, I don't know what's more dumb. The fact that he gambled with like a fan duel or a DraftKings account, or the fact that he's putting the Falcons in a parlay. What's more dumb? Putting the Falcons in a parlay. What are you 100%. doing? Dude? A, a five leg or an eight leg parlay and you're putting the Falcons in there. What's wrong with you, dude? Also too, a couple of things with, with the, the Calvin Ridley. Now they tell every player, many times, several times over their career, when they first get drafted, constant reminders to not bet on games. Also with all these betting partners like FanDuel, DraftKings, you know, they have, they, these are partner, these are partnerships with the NFL. So the way they found out it was really easy. (laughs) They were like, Hey, let me see your data since we're both partners. And they're like, Oh yeah, here are all the receipts and trails of him betting on games. So Mm -hmm. not real smart you know, on his part, thinking that he wasn't going to get caught seeing as, you know, the platform that he was using to bet uh, literally is streamlined in partnerships with the NFL. Right. So not so a, not a smart, not a smart. Do you player. see this as a big deal, John? Do you see this as him not playing in a game and betting on Falcons NFL games and he's not involved? Do you see this infraction as a big deal? Um, I, I think it's pretty cut and dry. It's a rule that everyone knows about, especially players when they get into the league. You're reminded constantly. Uh, a year is a lot, but that's the rule. And, and they I'm also sorry. could have this. They said the CBA could have removed him for life from uh, from the league. That was a stipulation like in the in the rules that says you could be banned for life from the league. So when you say a year is long, they could have made it. They could have took the full extent of the, of the rule. Totally. And people are like, oh, this is hip- hypocritical because the league is profiting off of gambling. Well, a couple of things, you know, the CBA, they could increase salaries because of all the you know, extra revenues that they're going to get from gambling. That's one. But this is really cut and dry. He broke a rule and he needs to suffer the consequences. Like, and I know that like Ray Rice, you know, like the video with Ray Rice and his fiance got two games. Adrian Peterson, felony child abuse, six games. Greg Hardy beating up his girlfriend, 10 games, reduced to four. Ezekiel Elliott, domestic abuse, six Pete games. Rose, not involved Cal- in Calvin in Ridley, the... 17 games for using FanDuel. Josh Gordon, six, <laughs> six seasons for smoking weed. weed. So I, I get all that, but he broke a rule. And again, this is for anybody. And I'll bring it back to Rodgers. When Rodgers said, you know, when he was – Asked, hey, you're on one. He li- like, you can say lie, but he definitely misled people like, oh, about his vaccination status. There's no question about it. He's a really smart dude, knew what he was doing. When he was asked about his mask wearing, like you're unvaccinated, you have to wear a mask. He was like, yeah, that just doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, you know, a too fucking bad dude. Like <laughs> those are the rules, and you need to follow the rules. I don't care who you are. He's my he's one of my favorite players of all time. Uh, but you need to follow the rule. And same thing with Ridley. It's a pretty cut and dry case, I think. Yeah, I just don't feel bad for anybody until Pete Rose is allowed into the Hall of Fame, honestly. 
I know. Cause the, like, and that's so funny. The, the Pete Rose thing, he got banned for life for betting on baseball and now DraftKings and FanDuel uh, are just like going to be sponsoring MLB constantly. They're creating mm-hmm. that whole wing in Wrigleyville. I yeah. think it's what FanDuel it's a sports or DraftKings book. Yep. for a sports book. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. I and mean, it sucks for him, but you know, I, I mean, it was a rule at the time that he did break. Also, that guy doesn't do himself any favors. Like he lied about it for years. He's kind of an asshole. Um, Who so Pete Rose? He also, yeah, he also like didn't make things easy for him. Right. I just, I just know he's the all-time hits leader. Yeah, he's all-time hits leader. Not... Now, are you asking me should he be in the Hall of Fame? Oh Absolutely. no, no. I, I right. think he should without yeah. without question. But I totally get why he's not in. Mm-hmm. I totally, I think he should, totally should be in. Yeah, I mean, like you said, just with the profiting these leagues profiting from. Uh, all these betting deals uh, with these companies is kind of, uh, you know, and then, and then you have a league who an owner was offering to pay a coach to throw games or lose games. And I'll pay you a hundred grand, grand. but they want to talk about integrity of the game, right? Oh, we can't have players betting on games because of the integrity you were going, you had owners Paying coaches, offering to pay coaches to lose games on purpose. So don't give me that bullshit about integrity of the NFL. Because NFL, in my eyes, has no integrity. Oh, I completely agree. They're all about, you know, maximizing profits, but also making sure that players toe the line. And again, when you when you get when you get betting into the game, there's going to be just a, just copious amounts of money coming into the game. But yeah, there's no there's no integrity. It just depends on who you are, you know. Like you know how easy it is to give your buddies couple bands, couple grand. Hey, go put it on this. I mean, even you don't have to do it from your phone. You can have friends bet for you, right? If you really wanted to. Of course. That's why Calvin Ridley is an idiot. Yeah. It was was so, so stupid. All right. Uh, John, back to baseball. MLB, new rules for 2023. They're going to implement a pitch clock. They're going to have bigger bases and banning the shift. Oh, here we go. Here you you just want to you want to start on this and complain about all these new rules. So I'll be optimistic. You're like old man, time. get off my lawn. This is what you have become, and you're I, younger than me. You I become know. an old man. I know. I I totally. I'm very protective about how all this stuff works. But I'm gonna I'm gonna shed a new light on it. Okay. Um, I heard like John Boy talking about it, and I did kind of agree. So once players start to adapt to this pitch clock and things like that, and, and let's let's specify. So. It's 19 seconds uh, when someone's on base, and then 17 seconds when no one's on base. Is 14, that it? I, okay. I don't Four, know. Maybe 14. Something think, okay. like that. And it's 19 seconds when someone's on base. Okay. So if the whole thing is if to condition pitchers to speed up the process it, to a point where we don't even notice it, that would be okay. I'd be okay with that. The thing I don't like is when it's going to be a pressure situation in the bottom of the eighth inning. And there's a guy on second base with one or two outs. And now you're rushing me with my pitches and maybe I don't get the sign from the catcher. Right. And I got to call him out. Like, and then we have to start implementing penalties for this. Like, what does that look like? So now are they going to get another base things like, you know, like a balk. So that's kind of where I have an issue with it. Like implementing these uh, penalties, if they don't adhere to it. Um, So I'm really wondering what that's going to look like. Um, but I, yeah, it's, I could just, I'm just looking at like the eighth and ninth inning. I don't think that should be rushed at all. Maybe innings one through seven, but once you get to the eighth and the ninth, I don't want to see pitchers rushed when every pitch is so hold so much more weight. It's a valid, it's a valid point. And I, I understand like there are, there are pressure situations. So, you know, as a, as an offense, when you're trying to, to beat a pitcher, there's called like pressure pitches, like putting pressure on them. So like putting guys on base, like having them use more, you know, mental aptitude to really focus more and duress pitching, um, making them pitch from, you know, uh, you know, they're, but they're behind in the count. They need to throw strikes. There's guys on base. And that takes a lot out of you physically and and mentally. Um, So I don't, I don't mind that, but I, I am in favor of a pitch clock. They, they do have to keep the game going. Now you talked about like, Oh, it's not going to speed up the game. Okay. Like time length of game. I don't think it's, it's a real problem with baseball three hours, three fifteen. I know that's long. I think it's the action. I think mm-hmm. people, I think people are willing to watch a three hour baseball game. 
if there's action, if people are stealing bases, that's another reason they want to increase base side. It's the incentive to steal bases. I said this on the last podcast, I think, but the top three things that Major League Baseball, Theo Epstein has been working on trying to fix the game, and he did you know, advanced an, uh, analysis. The top three things people want to see in baseball, it's not home runs and it's not walks, which is, and it's definitely not strikeouts, which is everything that you're getting right now with today's game. It's triples, doubles, and stolen bases. Those are the three top things people want to see in, during a baseball game. And they are all at categorical lows. So, mm. you know, you need to fix those things. How do you do that? You increase base size because that is going to incentivize people to steal more. You are going to make pitchers work faster. I also think too, there should be something on the batter where you can't like, you know, 10, spend like 15 minutes, like, you know, changing your, you know, your batting gloves. The Nomar Garcia para. Yeah. Readjusting your cup or just like taking forever. So I think if you're going to rush pitchers, you're going to put a clock on the pitchers. You also need to put some sort of time limit like to get in the box because the Mm -hmm. pitcher can't do anything until the hitter is in the box. So I also think too, there needs some things and some stipulations there, which no one's talked about either, but you know, I know you don't like them, but I agree with increasing base sizes. I agree with the pitch clock. I also think too, especially with just, you know, how things are today. uh, People, I think people need to see a clock on a game. I think, I think in today's game, I think one of the great things about baseball is there is no clock, but I think with TikTok, I think with modern technology, there's so many other things to do. I think it's, I think to watch some, something now, especially in a game like that, you know, you know, you know, it's not a 23 hour, 23 minute TV show. You need to have something that is moving that game along. Um, so it can be 19 seconds, whatever, but I do need, I do think there needs to be some enforcement to increase that. Also banning shifts. I totally now if analysis says that there's not going to be more hits, but there are so many times that I watch a, a really good left-handed hitter just smoke a ball and it's caught. Um, and, and I just think it, it also, again, like I've talked about um, it, if you, if you shift um, it deemphasizes people's athletic ability because people don't have to move because you know where they're standing. I want to see more people making plays. I think the biggest change that no one's talked about, and I think it's going to be so hard to get it done is moving the mound back because people strike out way too much. People are throwing harder than ever before. They're optimizing for spin rates, grips. You can get a full kinetic breakdown of your, you know, biology and how you can maximize spin rate and velocity now. So there's nothing changing that and hitting's all reactionary and pitching. It really has an advantage. I think you need to move the mound back a little bit to give hitters just a tick or two more time to react and make contact with the ball because strikeouts are a huge problem. Well, I was having this argument with somebody saying my argument is more runs is not, and you saying speeding up the game is not going to lead to more viewership. If more runs were to lead to more viewership, the Colorado Rockies would have a huge fan base. I'm not saying more runs. I'm saying, I'm not saying you are right. But there are people who are saying more runs equals more viewership. I've seen it online and I am saying that's not true. That's not true at all. They're like, well, if there's more, you know, you saying more action will bring more. Um, one thing that you mentioned about the shift. So um, the game day put out players shifted against the most last season by percentage of plate appearances, right? Number one, Carlos Santana. Um, but I'm going to look at Max Muncy was number nine, 90% of the time of his plate appearances and Carlos Santana, 97% of the time. Okay. So you saying these players, you know, Oh, they can't, uh, they can't get on base. There's no action because they're getting shifted on. All right. Max Muncy, they have the same amount of games, 144 versus 158. Max Muncy had a 4.9 war. Carlos Santana, negative 0.2 war. Okay. He only had 15 doubles. Max Muncy had uh, 26. Muncy had 36 home runs. His numbers on base percentage, uh, 368, a 527 slug. 895 OPS versus Carlos Santana, 342 slug, 660 OPS. So I said, don't tell me that it prevents production or runs. There are good hitters and there are not so good hitters in my mind. And when I started looking at these players that got shifted against the most by season, I started seeing these numbers and it's like, well, he's just not 
getting on base. He's, he's at a slug. I mean, you can't say that they're not hitting doubles. Max Muncy gets plenty of doubles. You know what I mean? So when I started looking at these players, I'm just kind of like, um, it, it's just it's just a matter of, of hitters themselves and not so much the shift. And then also I saw a video of Ted Williams. I had no idea Ted Williams got shifted on so much. Everybody on the right side of the field. Granted, they weren't in right field. Second baseman wasn't out, you know, in sh- uh, short right field. Ted Williams, the best hitter of all time, who hit 406, shifted on. They all shifted on the right side of the base. Nobody brings that up. They think this is a new age kind of thing. But then that was in the 40s, man. So I just don't buy into all of that um, for those reasons. Okay. I, it's, it's pitchers throw too hard to go the other way. I also think, too, the incentives are wrong because people, people are, are paid to hit home runs. And they don't right. care if you strike out and, and they're shifting against people. So like, who cares? Just try to hit a home run regardless. I mean, but, they are anyway, right? I mean, everything is launch angle. But, I, but I, th- I think if you, I think if you out, I think, sorry, I think if you outlaw shifts and I think, I think the biggest thing is you need to move the mound back. Mm-hmm. You, people are striking out at an astronomically high rate. You, this cannot continue uh, there. And also there needs to be, people need to be paid for, um, you know, I know batting average means nothing. And I know walks and home runs are, you know, paramount and I, I get it statistically, but it's so bad for the game. It is so, so bad. Not for you and me. We're diehard baseball fans. We're going to watch regardless, but they have a massive, massive problem. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you ban shifts and you move the mound back, you're going to have players having a, a big opportunity to react and go the other way. You're going to have an opportunity. And I think you need So where does it stop? See where where does it stop? I is think it, it going to come to the point where it's I, like, you know what? Fastballs got to be under 95. Sinkers, ah, uh, we're not going to do sinkers anymore. Do you know Whereas, how crazy it is that they haven't changed the rules since the 1800s? It's still 60 feet 6 inches. It's that's crazy. They have yeah. changed so many other rules in in all of sports, football, basketball, like tons in baseball has changed virtually nothing and the players are bigger stronger faster it's crazy so moving the mound back moving the mound back you're going to equalize pitchers now okay so jacob de isn't going to be as special as everybody else if you're moving it back so what at the end of the day it's an entertainment product and your entertainment product is dying you need more viewership but when you start having players who are still um comparable to each other you're not going to get those higher dollar amounts for those contracts right and that's what these players want more money more money more money but if i can compare you that you are at the same as 85 percent of the league why would i give you a large contract you don't you 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 don't deserve it. You're not outperforming them. Jacob DeGrom, uh, Scherzer, uh, Garrett Cole, these guys are outperforming majority of the league. So when you do that, and I'm not saying I agree or disagree. All I'm saying is I can see a problem there that pitchers, once it's time for money, that that's going to be an issue. Of course, it's going to be an issue because you're fundamentally changing the game since they, since it's always been. So, of course, you're going to have players have and haw, and you're not wrong about that. But at the end of the day, this is a game. This is an entertainment product. So from a, from an aesthetic standpoint, the game cannot continue like it is now. You are losing people at such a, a vast rate. The sad thing is you're not even losing people. No one cares. They're not right. even tuning in. They're not, there's no reason to do it. There's a couple of things you need to do, in my opinion. You need to move the mound back. You need to, uh, you need to ban shifts. You need to give up licensing rights so people can share highlight videos and clips and share those around and increase your social handles. Ideally, you want mm. players to be more out there, but you can't make them. Marketing issue. And, then, sure. and then marketing. You need, I mean, that's I mean, that's what I do professionally. You need to be really great at marketing. And I think you need young people working in their marketing. It's like, all right, like things we we talk about like King Griffey Jr. baseball. Like let's go back. What what are some of the things we loved about baseball? in the nineties. What are some great things? Video games, baseball cards. There's mm. no reason that you can't start implementing those things and in, into their marketing and throwbacks and, you know, Cooperstown collection, like that's just a site where they sell jerseys and stuff. That stuff is amazing. There's no reason you can't infuse that in major league baseball's marketing. Mm. Um, and with, you know, 
with 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 iPhones and cell phones, like that's how you do it. You do it through mobile, and it's really a big opportunity for them. Sorry, what happened, Keep, bro? Oh, I just kept the uh, kept the other. My camera stops recording at like twenty nine minutes. Oh, the, okay. The DSLR, well, you can, so I just you can cut it. But yeah, we're good. That's thirty minutes, right? Oh no, that was that was the uh, the other camera I have over here. I got a two shot going. I got oh. a wide. Ooh, snap, dude. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see how it's how it's implemented, but we need to get a season first. So real quick, John Russell Wilson to the Broncos. Yes. Good, not so good. He's going to be with Mahomes, Carr, Herbert, and Wilson dude, now. Talk about a tough, tough division. You know, right? I think he's like damned if he does, damned if he does, because damned if he do, damned if he don't. There we go. Because he's in the NFC West anyway. So, okay, you have, you're you going to be playing the Rams. You're going to be playing the Cardinals. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have a tough, tough road ahead of you anyway in that right. division, regardless. The, you know, um, so just – Fine, you're in the AFC West. You're facing a bunch of other really good quarterbacks. I think it was just it, – it's so evident that he just wanted out of Seattle because I, I think he needed to change with Pete Carroll. I think that relationship had really – Gone grown, stale. Yeah, really – you know, had gone, you know, gone stale, and they were just – they were just at – you know, they were done, um, mm. which I totally get, and they had a great run, but – Is Russell Wilson how, and, and it seems up? like they were going to move Carroll. You know, no. which I was surprised about. But is Russell Wilson washed up? No, dude. He's no, great. no, he's really, really good. People said that about Rodgers after the 2018 season. And I was like, he's not washed up. Mike McCarthy sucks. Mm-hmm. Mike McCarthy is a horrible, horrible head coach. I had been saying it for years, even when like they won the Super Bowl. I'm like, this guy's not a good coach. We Rodgers just got super hot and Clay Matthews was like coming into his prime and we had Charles Woodson, you know, but my, after that 2014 NFC championship loss where they squandered a 16 and nothing lead against Seattle, Mm. he should have been fired after that game. And the fact that he wasn't was atrocious. He is a terrible coach. And the fact that Jerry Jones picked him up was hilarious. And I think we all saw like everything, you know, basically everything I've been saying for years in that playoff game, clock mismanagement, just not attention. He has no attention to detail. detail. And then it's so important. You look at Belichick, Belichick is so detail oriented, which is so important for a head coach. And I, and one of the reasons I like LaFleur, you know, aside from the social, the, the special teams debacle is he's really kind of type a, and really detail oriented and Rogers makes fun of him all the time. Rogers is like, you know, like, you know, Matt's a little uptight and, you know, like, you know, and I have to tell him to relax, but like, that's exactly what you want. You want a mm-hmm. really uptight coach. That's really detail oriented. That's all over everything. And you want a quarterback that's playing loose and ideally a hall of fame quarterback, which I have. So yeah. I'm curious. I'm to sorry see you... again, Bear fans. I'm sorry. It's Hug another a bear four fan years. Today. It's gonna suck, but you know what? It'll be over in in, in five years, and then uh, you know you can fire another head coach and and get another quarterback who's supposed to be the one too. Do you realize I'm 30, 34 years old, about to be thirty five fairly soon next month. In nineteen, I was five years old when Favre was traded from the Falcons to the Packers. And that's when I'm, that's when I started making memories at like five or six, when I started watching right. Favre, I have only known two quarterbacks in my whole life and like 30 plus years. I've, I've only known stellar quarterback play. And the second quarterback is infinitely better than, than the, Favre, first than the first. It's not even close. Did you see that stat on Christmas day when they were playing the the Browns and they had their seasons like stats, career stats up to that point side by side. Mm -mm. Favre had like 400 interceptions and Rogers had like 78 or like 80. It was just incredible. Same amount of touchdowns, you know, it's unbelievable. Sounds like a good problem to have. It is. It is. I'm just glad. And and a quarterback does like, you know, that's the other thing with the Packers. They don't draft free agents. No one wants to play there. And People, you know, give Rodgers a hard time. You take take Rodgers away from that team, they're nothing. Right. They're nothing. 
you know, I, I remember one time I was watching a sports century, uh, Michael Jordan, like that on, on ESPN classic and Chick Hearn, who I believe was a radio broadcaster for the Lakers. They asked him what the bulls were, what the bulls were before Michael Jordan. And he said, cows. And that's, cows, yeah. and that's literally what the Packers are. The Packers, it's the smallest professional market. I, you know, I believe in sports and you take away those two hall of fame quarterbacks. They can't compete with these other teams, but I would say Kansas city is also a very small market, but again, very I am happy that, that Russell Wilson took the spotlight away from drama queen, Aaron Rodgers today. Just when he wanted to drop that news, uh, Russell Wilson was like, Oh, actually, by the way, going to Denver. Yeah. But the sad thing is who cares? Like, I think the Ru- Russell's like, ah, oh, crap. No one cares. Rogers just made a, a historic deal, you know, yeah. and he, he, he is, he's high maintenance, but as a fan, I don't want anyone else under center than him. He's obviously incredible. Coming he's from so a good. cheese head. All right, John, we're going to wrap it up. Um, what's today? Tuesday. Yeah. We'll be back uh, later this week. Hopefully we'll have some better news. Uh, with baseball, maybe they and talked again. They they talked today. again today. I guess it was supposed and to be. If we don't get a decision today, yeah, uh, they're supposed to cancel more games. So let's get this shit figured out. They said per sources, MLB's latest offer starts at two hundred twenty-eight million in twenty-three, goes to two thirty-eight. Increase uh, competitive balance tax in exchange for forty-five day notice on rule changes. <sighs> Just get a deal done. Beautiful. Yeah. Get it done. All right, John, I will see you next episode. Yeah. Sounds good. Lost in the shuffle.